Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we'll unlock the book Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood. How could someone be born a crime? The protagonist and author of this book Trevor Noah is one such person. He was born a crime simply because his father is white and his mother is black, such a combination was illegal under the Immorality Act. It was a crime no less than treason. The Immorality Act enacted by the apartheid regime in South Africa aimed at denying black South Africans the same right to marry as whites. According to the Immorality Act, having sexual relations with a person of another race was a crime. The parents would be sentenced, and children born to such a relationship would be sent to an orphanage. In this book, Noah uses the first-person point of view to explain how he grew up in South Africa, depicting what life was like under apartheid. We can see from this book that Noah who was born a crime had a difficult childhood. He spent little time with his father, and when he did, they mostly stayed indoors. If they went outside together, his father could only walk on the other side of the road, pretending not to know Noah and his mother. Otherwise, they would all be taken away by the police for investigation. Trevor has darker skin than his father, and he was classified as colored. In South Africa, mixed people were classified as their own separate group, neither black nor white, but colored. The government forced people to register their race, black people, white people, Indian people, and colored people. As a mixed person, Noah has lighter skin than his mother, so he couldn't walk with his mother in public either. Every time they went out for a walk, his mother would invite a colored neighbor to join them, so she could pose as a maid to avoid the police's investigation. Noah grew up with his mother and has been deeply influenced by her. As a matter of fact, this memoir of Noah's is more like an epic for his mother. A strong and independent woman, his mother never succumbed to her fate because of her race. She would give her every effort to do what she wanted and eventually make it happen. Including Noah, she gave birth to him not because she wanted to be part of a man's life but to have a baby of her own. After Noah's birth, she raised him alone, keeping a reasonable and safe distance from his father, and managed to give Noah a normal life in a racially discriminative environment. Though life was hard, Noah learned to confront it with optimism under his mother's protection, and eventually became a world-famous talk show host. Michiko Kakutani, the former chief book critic for the New York Times and a Pulitzer Prize winner praised this book as a love letter to the author's remarkable mother. And it indeed deserves such praise. Next, we'll tell Trevor Noah's bittersweet life stories through three sections. Part 1, Trevor Noah's Birth Part 2, Influence from His Mother Part 3, Growing Up as Trevor Noah Noah's growing up story was closely related to the larger context of his time and the apartheid social environment. For centuries, apartheid dominated every aspect of South Africa. The institutionalization of racial segregation in, in South Africa made it justifiable for whites to violate the rights of other races. Under such a regime, people were forced to register their race with the government and were classified in descending order into white people, colored people, Indian people, and black people. Based on those classifications, people of different races lived in strictly segregated areas. Millions of people were uprooted and relocated. Because of their different skin colors, they were not allowed to use common public resources and services. Take the land for example. Noah's mother once lived in the so-called homelands for black people. Despite the fact that black people made up over 80% of South Africa's population, the territory allocated for the homelands was about 13% of the country's land. There was no running water, no electricity. People lived in huts. By contrast, white people who were in the minority lived in lush and irrigated white neighborhoods. With such serious social inequality, protests and riots often broke out. However, almost every protest for rights ended with much more black blood than white blood being shed. Besides confrontations between black people and white people, racism also stirred up conflicts between different tribes, making them hate and even kill each other.